welcome to Electrify, the video show and podcast for electricians only, with your hosts Paul Abernathy and Jay the Basement King Grunberg. Sit back and enjoy the show. What up, what up, everybody? Welcome to the Residential Commentary. My name is Paul Abernathy, and with me, my co-commentator himself, the Basement King, all the way from Colorado. You thought you'd seen the last of us, but not so fast. Here we are for another installment of Residential Wiring Commentary. Jay, welcome back, as always. Thanks, man. I'm... uh... I'm excited to do, I think it's episode eight tonight. So that's going to be awesome. And it is all. We got our electrician all queued up and uh, he's ready to go. Here I am with a little coffee, coffee hour. Coffee hour. I've been oh. watching a few of those, man. Those are, those are awesome. You know, the, the coffee hour platform that you created. Gem. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Code, 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 code. Good, the bad, the ugly. Sometimes I'm not so nice, but you know what? Hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, so, and you're going to be a, a guest on the coffee hour. We got to get you on there when we talk residential. Got to have the basement king on for all things residential topic. Kind of like tonight's show, residential wiring. Hard to believe we're at part eight of this. And we've got other ones that we'll do. But this is of the residential commentary. We're we're at we're at eight. So, Fine. all right. Well, I guess without further ado, let's go on and get into our lesson with our electrician and see where we're at. So let's go on and get over at it. Okay, here we go. All right. So he's getting started. So let's see, Jay tonight. Uh, we're doing, he's going to be talking family room tonight. So this one shouldn't be too long of one. I think it's like 11, 12 minutes, not a real long one. Ken will add our commentary, but it's not, not a long one tonight. We're going to cut you a break here on a Monday night. Uh, but, uh, I've got my coffee. Who knows what Jay's got? Probably has something a little bit, uh, you know, oh, water. See, it's sticking to that resolutions there. That's good. All right. Have you broke any of the resolutions yet, Jay? Any of your resolutions? You know, I've, I've, uh, this Sunday we went out and got McDonald's. Um, still keeping to that. Every Sunday morning was like a tradition, you know, because you, you bust your butt through the week and mm-hmm. Sunday comes around and whether you're going to church or not, because you, you know, w- we've been doing the church at home type of deal on Sundays, but we'll still go out and, um, go grab McDonald's during Sunday mornings. Other than that, though, I haven't really broken many, um, a little bit of soda here and there, but yeah, no, no you know le- what you work hard, you play hard. You, 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 you know, we, we set our expectations high, but you know, at the end of the day, it's not all for naught, right? Yeah. No. Keep at Man, it. I don't set them to, to too high to know that I'm, you know, I've set myself up for failure, you know, and we talked about this before when people do that, they, they set that bar super high. And then when they fail one time, they go, Oh, I didn't meet expectations. Know. So, you know, just, just going to give it, throw it all away. And then there was no point of the whole thing then. So yeah, of course, like you said, you're, you're going to break them a little bit, but as far as the alcohol goes, I, I've not had a single drop and I, I don't plan on it. So yep, that's it. More coffee. I can't get rid of the coffee though. If I had to do a New Year's resolution, it was to stop coffee. I would have broken that by twelve oh one. It just would have been no. I'm a my wife. My wife can't stand coffee. I love coffee. Now I don't like coffee things like uh, like what coffee ice cream or coffee. I don't yeah. I don't like iced coffee. It's just I like cappuccino. I got a Keurig. It makes my cappuccino. Again, I'm spoiled like that. So anyway, no, I went out. We went to that Christmas party I was telling you about at a really nice high-end restaurant. And I had the medallions, which are pretty much three. Was it Chris's? Things. It was it Chris, uh, Chris, Chris, oh, where is it? What's it the, was, what's, uh, what's it? Ruth, I, Ruth, Chris. Yeah, well, no, 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 not Ruth, Chris. Ruth, Chris is a, it, it is a nice place, but this one was, 
I forget the name of it, but it was in, in the mall center, and it was it was really nice, like a five star restaurant. And I had the medallions, which are like three filet mignons, and they were all three different. One was one had like shrimp on it, one had crab on it, kind of like surf and turf, and then one was a coffee style one, if you believe it mm. or not, and it was actually mm. really good. So coffee steak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so good. somebody's <laughs> posting. It's no tea hour with me. It's coffee. Got to get it. You know what? If it's going to kill me, you know, they say coffee is good for you. But if it's going to kill me, you know, I got to die from something. So coffee it is. So, all right. Uh, let's see. You know, the moment I didn't drink coffee, somebody might say drink liquor. And which one do you think's better for you? I don't know. I don't know. No comments. All right. Let's go on and get in to our electrician and let's hit him get started in, uh, He's drinking water, it looks like. So let's get him get started in this episode. Okay, he's throwing it down. Wow, it is pouring out there. More circuits left to do when it comes to the 14 wire. And what we have left is this uh, family room. Here's the plans right here. These are extra plans because they kind of framed up the living room a little different. There's no three ways in here, but I guarantee you we're going to get into three ways in the next video. And I have my home run here going to the panel. And we just got to connect the circuit up just like we did in the other videos. We're going to go around we're going to hit all the power. And then we're going to pull the, um, the switch leg. Since I got my home run here, I'm going to make my first jumper over there to the back door. There's a dining light. Like I'm sure a lot of people want to put the dining light on with the kitchen light circuit, but it's only one light and I don't want to put two different powers in this box. And then I got to start worrying about neutrals getting crossed up and that just kind of makes things um, harder than they need to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the dining light on with the, with the family room and the back porch. The back porch usually does go on with the family room. But I'm also going to add that dining room light just because I don't want to overcomplicate this box more than it than it has to be. These so, so Jay, so that brings up a good topic. So a lot of people think, you know, they, they get confused at the residential when it comes to the receptacles in the dining room, which is, you know, again, can be on the small appliance brand circuit. Uh, you could have the two serving the kitchen and two serving the counter, but you could also have a third small appliance that does the... Dining room, again, 1,500 VA each for those that are actually doing exam prep. Um, but when it comes to the lighting, Jay, it doesn't matter. You know, kitchen lighting, dining room lighting, you know, just look at your loads. Um, it's no problem coming out of that, that one box. And it's probably going to have very few, looked in that drawing there, very few lighting loads. What do you think? Yeah, no, I, I like how he's thinking here, too to put it on the same circuit as the other lights. Cause if you were to bring another circuit in, which I've done several times in projects and when you have two circuits in one box and they're both 14 twos and they're both lightings, you tend to mix the neutrals up like he was saying. And it, it, it makes it hard when you go back and try to troubleshoot it. You could spend, you know, hours trying to fix it. Hopefully it wouldn't take that long, but it well, could to yeah, whoever, it, 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 you know, yeah, and you got to remember too. So he, he's doing all these areas that require AFCI protection. Now you yeah. know the lighting. So I mean, if you do start screwing up those neutrals, then you you do have a problem, and you end up troubleshooting it. Um, he's probably still as normal. Our electrician runs his his uh, home run to against the stud, comes wow. into the first knockout like he always does, and then of course he'll place his he you know, through the openings. He'll place his switches you know, corresponding opening to kind of give him an idea of where everything's running. Okay. So that type of thing. But yeah, we, there's no problem. Anybody would say there's no problem with, you know, dining room on with the uh, kitchen or whatnot lighting. It's outside, outside lighting or whatever. It's all about the load. Again, we're assume he knows his load count. He knows what his wattage is. I have no problem with it at all. But there's people that would say, whoa, whoa, you can't have the dining room. We're talking the lighting. We're not, we're not talking receptacles. Okay ones right here are facing the kitchen this is considered a hall and these are facing the kitchen so that's going to be on with the dining room receptacles which as you know is going to be a 20 amp arc fault breaker all right so i will say he, he's saying that if that's in the kitchen he's saying that little space between the island wall is is hall uh, i would probably argue that's still kitchen 
you know, again, maybe he knows his jurisdiction and how they would look at it. And I can't remember totally how the house is, how this room was laid out. Uh, but he can call it hall. Typically a hall is a transition from one room to another room. Uh, but, you know, again, there's, do, do you call the space between an island and the countertop in the kitchen? Do you call that a hall? It's all part of the kitchen. So point is just make sure you know where, what you're doing in your area, because it, it can make a difference on whether or not, you know, that's a hall circuit whether or not that's 15 amp or whether or not it's still considered part of in the kitchen and it's got to be a part of the small appliance brand circuit, things like that to, to, to be aware of. My, and since this is my dining light, it doesn't matter. It can be on with a 15 amp regular lighting circuit, but all these receptacles right here are going to be on 12 two also. So it's just going to be a continuation of the dining room receptacles. It's a wet location. We got our home run and I don't know, the wet location doesn't matter. So the requirement for GFCI protection, he calls them wet location. Just being in the just being in the kitchen and does doesn't constitute a wet location, right? So obviously the two small appliance brand circuits that are going to serve the counter space, they're going to be GFCI protected. Doesn't require the receptacles currently in the code, does not require the other receptacles that are on the wall around the kitchen to be GFCI protected. Can if you want. If you want, right? You can, but it's not, you know, it's not a requirement to do that. But the one serving the countertop or any receptacle that's within six feet of the sink, uh, edge that those things. It's my camera, Jay. Sorry about that. Can kind of camera. My personal camera with you keeps wandering around. So <laughs> at the at the end of the day, uh, I'm not sure what he meant about the water statement. Uh, although it is raining like cats and dogs there, so Right, right now, it's in a wet location. Yeah, the whole place, the puddles over there on the floor. So, all right, let's, let's let him see what he's doing here. We're going to go ahead and start running the power. Oh, it looks like it stopped raining. It's good. And again, I'm stapling as little as possible because, like I said in the earlier video, stapling is going to be uh, one step altogether, except for in the ceiling. Now, if you've got a wire hanging in the ceiling, you definitely want to go ahead and do that first because things will start to get a little tighter when you go to staple down the walls. So this is not a covered porch, so all I need right here is a coach light going out the back, and that's all this one gang's for. So power is always on the inside. Uh oh, gotta make some money. Okay, that was the worst jumper of this circuit, so now I actually drilled underneath this window to make this video a little easier. I usually would have just coughed out and ran it up and over. Alright, Jay. A lot of comments in here about... Uh, NEMA 3 and all that, I have no idea what they're talking about because we're not doing panels and it's a box outside and if it's got nothing to do with the NEMA 3, oh, so I'm not even sure what you're talking about, oh. Uh, at this point, uh, my only hope is, you know, if you do poke out the NMB for the outside light at the back or something like that, uh, that you don't get an inspector come along and say, well, it's stuck out in the moisture, so moisture's now wicking up in the end of the NMB, and then they make you replace it. Uh, that's why I typically cut boxes in and put, you know, cut everything in for those type of things rather than poke it out. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure what you mean, oh, by NEMA 3 at this stage, because uh, there's not a panel out there, and i not sure what that means. I may just be saying if if we were considering it all wet look i think he's doing a funny oh i think yeah. funny out would, there then it would be a nema 3 r o not a three. yeah there we go all right so there <laughs> Thank you. 
At what point did he decide to start adding music in the background, Jay? You know, it's it's that, and also I don't know if you if he caught it in the very beginning, but he dropped down like a little, you know, a oh, little yes, average. I, yeah, no, he had the. Oh, yeah, man. that, and then he's had the blueprint pops in now. So, yeah, know. you know, there's there's a possibility that he may have gotten power director. <laughs> Eight videos in, and all of a sudden now you start. Uh, seeing uh, uh, he's, you know what? He's stepping up his game. Eight That's eight videos, right, eight videos in, and he hadn't done another video in a year. But now he's stepping it up now, and has music banging hey. in the background. That's what I'm talking about. You know, I just, a, I just kind of wish he would he would speed up the, you know, the two to four times on these little runs. As, if he's not explaining anything, you know, just like, dude, it's only eleven minute video today. <laughs> what do we no, want us to do? It, 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 you know, it makes the video go a little smoother. If you, you know what I'm talking about for those yeah. ones that you're just kind of messing around and and pulling cable. You know, no one wants to watch your regular speed. You're slow. Like anybody's <laughs> slow. Man. He's he's actually pretty fast to be honest with uh, you. He's, uh, I, I take offense to that, Jay. I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not slow. I'm just saying. Okay. It makes Good. it look faster if you put it okay. at the two times. What I'm Here saying. Go. Legs be look like it be, you know remind me like Benny Hill. He could have had that music going in the background. He, you know, that would have been awesome. But you know what? Not everybody can be masters of power director. Power director. Power to wet the pro. Nice straight lines though. There, see that? Look at that. Nice pop-up telling us where he's going. Where was this in the first seven, dude? Come on. Oh, I wouldn't have done that. See that? Look at that change of direction. Why? Come on. Whoa. Oh, hey, Jay. So, Jay, I've noticed on, for those out there who don't know, you have to go over to TikTok and follow the basement king. Um, so Jay has been talking about saving wire only to be wasting a bunch of SE cable. I'm just saying, but he's, you know, he's, you Done. know, he, he, you know, he, he's, he's jumping on his guys about their NMB and then he does a video and he's like, well, I guess I, I guess I didn't really follow my own rules for the SE. I got all this. I'm sitting there going, wow, I guess that's owner's prerogative. I guess the owner can do that. I don't know. That, that was terrible, man. What did I have? An extra like 15 feet up on the ground. <laughs> I was like, and he was worried about his guys having 18 inches of NMB. And I was like, hmm. Last I checked, I, of course, the cost today on NMB is quite expensive. But last I checked, that it SE is. was probably more expensive. Just saying. Yeah, the S the SE's up there too, and I and and I was actually giving my guys some crap about probably what he's about to do here, where he has a cable coming in, and he's probably going to have one going out, right? So you got to in and an out. Typical in residential, you know, unless you're you're in a pickle and you got to splice it multiple ways. But uh, he had the cable. My guys had the cable about as long as he does, and and I was like, how much you know extra wire do I need? And I was just I was just joking around, and some guys, man, they they ripped me a new one. They said. It's better to have it than to go look for it, you know, or, hey, you know, we, we pigtail everything. And then I got in a big debate with guys about <laughs> pigtailing and not pigtailing. And if you uh, don't pigtail, you're not a real electrician. But if you pigtail, you're a super trician. I just was like, you gotta, you oh have to you have to love the armchair electricians over on TikTok <laughs> or Instagram. I mean, just I'm just saying, you know. Everybody has an opinion, and then all of a sudden, they're code experts. All of them won't won't post a code reference to save their ass, but they'll yeah. but they'll they'll tell you that's against code. And I'm like, prove it. And, and not whether I agree or disagree with them, but usually that's me. I'm like, prove it. And you know, post it. Let's hear it. Yeah. Well, I don't have it handy with me. I'm like, then you ain't no code guy if you ain't got it handy. I'm just saying. That's right, man. And I, I, I thank you for the ones that you had my back on a couple of them. Because again, sometimes ter terminology isn't my, you know, uh, isn't my comfort zone. Sometimes I just, you know, again, being a contractor, you say things certain ways and, and people take it certain ways. But um, yeah, it, it is was, fun. It was to, the one where you were talking phase A's, phase B's, and then they yeah. jump in on there. And they want to, they feel like they want to one up you and pound their chest and go, well, he's really, it's really single phase, but it's too, 
I'm um, dude, dude, it's one winding that's split in the middle and yeah. it, it's, it's two parts of a single phase. I mean, but, but, but we know what you mean, but yet there's always somebody waiting, you know, what do you just think I did? A, should I, should I have said, you know, and, and again, I know it's kind of off topic, but should I said a leg and B leg? Like how, how would you define A and B? What would you have said in that instance? Cause it's A and B, right? And yeah, I would have, big, what, you're what, what you're trying to do is to convey something in a vernacular that people can understand. Again, there's people that for years when somebody would say sub panel, there was a few people out there who would have a conniption fit. Now we joke about it and I say remote distribution panel because I mean, it's an inside joke with me. I don't care whether somebody calls it a sub panel. It is a subset of the main or a subset of another panel. Call it sub panel if you want. But there are some people that literally get a hard on when somebody says sub panel and they're like, it's not a sub panel, you know? And I, and I, so I get a, I get an inside joke out of it when I correct or say, well, it's a remote distribution panel. I don't give a damn if you call it sub panel, but in your case, it's one winding, it's single phase. You can call it leg A, leg B. It's not necessarily phase A and phase B because it's one phase. It's, correct. But you, you could say leg A, B, you could say, you know, you could, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. But boy, do those people that want to pound their chest who probably, one, have never done a video, two, have never done a podcast, have never stuck their self out there, who do nothing but roam around on the social media and can't wait to <laughs> post something. They're just trolls, man. <laughs> Dude, I got the say I get the same thing all the time where somebody will I'll have a conversation. If I'm not perfectly the way they want it, they go running off and do a podcast or do something and then misquote me. You know, that happens a lot. Uh, wink wink out there, folks. But at the end of the day, they're like, Really? Come on, get over yourself. It's that yeah. the, we know what we're talking about. But no, we're all but, doing but the you, same stuff, man. But, we're but supposed you, to be brotherhood. But, but to promote the profession, you have to fight. Whatever. Bite me. All right. Anyway, let's move on. Well, that's one way for us to stretch out this video, Jay. <laughs> God, we haven't seen each other for a week, you know. Elect Electrify is dead now. We got to catch up. You know what I'm saying? Great. Great. Back. Look, look at his, look, he has stepped up his game, Jay. He needs to go back and redo all those videos. I'm just saying. <laughs> now you don't need to have all that slack when you pulled it right there. You could have pulled it back. All right, that's not too He sure looks casual now, doesn't he, Jay? He's relaxed more now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's all the power for the family room. So we had our home run come into here. And then we went out of that and we hit the back door switch. And then we hit all the receptacles in the family room. So after I, I walk through and I make sure I've got all the power wires right, power wires right, <laughs> cables. Uh, now it's time to do the switch legs. God, you imagine how much grief we would get, Jay, if we call it power wires instead of cables? There's because because oh. you know somebody out there is just itching. I mean, they're just their fingers are already typing. It meant cable. He should have said cables. We I think we know we know what he's talking about, right? So yeah. I know how difficult it is to, to be on the spot like he is and, and to be working and explaining at the same time that that's just a different ball game. Oh, yeah. And like you said, so many people are so anal about what they say, how they say it, how they do it. Whereas in, you know, he's, he's trying his best. Here's what, now, here's, I, here's what I say, Jay. Try to do what we did for two years live. Cause everybody makes videos and they record it and they edit it. But do it live in talk code, talk, spit it out there, roll it off the tongue. 
live. Live. And I've been doing it for since 2004. And I don't think I have that many people saying, oops, Paul made poo poo. Okay. And I do it live. Okay. This is right. live. Right. So, <laughs> anywho, I love it. Armchair, you know, any, 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 any who, one I wanted to bring up is this is a, this says this is a family room. I believe that off the backside of this is his kitchen. So that's a great topic of where you have to draw the line. Is it the line of demarcation has to be defined and it can be on the drawings between where the kitchen stops and where the family room would begin. And if you have an island there, that there's a lot of times that that island is at the line of demarcation. And some people argue that that uh, that island, the backside of it, you know, could be if it was a island with an actual framed up wall, then they could say that wall is facing the family room. Okay, that type of thing. So any receptacle you put in there could not serve the island. So you'd have to have something separate for the island, and that would be on 20 amp. And, of course, that doing the family room could be on 15 those type of scenarios. So you run into all this. So, you know, that's just things that you have to think about when you're running your cables is where's that line? Usually the plans, hopefully you're not going to have a line that shows it, but you need to know the differences in it too. And I'm sure you run into that in the basements as well. You know, I, I run into that a lot. And even though we don't really do full blown many kitchens, we do what we call wet bars. And so we'll, um, we'll bring in a 12 two for the wet bar. And let's say it's, it has an Island or a peninsula that, you know, one side is facing the wet bar and one side is facing the, the uh, family room, the receptacle that's facing the family room, I'll put on with the family room circuit. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, all it is is different size cable because the wet bar I serve on a 12 and the family I serve on a 14 in the basements, every all receptacles are required to be GFCI. So yep. it still will be GFCI protected. Um, and and of course, AFCI protected. And AFCI protected as well. Yep. So it's going to be, you know, for us, we, we usually do the dual function breakers. I think we've talked yeah. about this before. But um, yep. yeah, that that's what we do. And then before, let's say uh, pre-2020, and it was 2017, we would do the same thing. But I would have to be careful because if maybe they had a sink in that island or peninsula yeah. and that was within six feet of that receptacle facing yeah. the family, I would have to put that on a, a GFI, you know, whereas in all the other were arc faults. So I'm kind of glad that they did do all receptacles in the basement. Um, GFCI protected, obviously, yeah. and arc, and all protected, but the only problem I have with that is the, is the, it, I just don't think it's necessary if it's a finished basement. Uh, right. If it's unfinished, yeah. If it's finished, what's the difference? Um, you know, the, they're required already to do waterproofing. They're required to do all that. I mean, could it flood? Hell, your living room could flood, you know? So, I mean, yeah, I... Have a leak. Have some type of water leak and yeah, the water's going to... Yeah, well, <laughs> you take, you know, Texas, when we had those big storms, it, 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 we don't have basements here, but tons of homes flood. So... You know, but if, if the if the manufacturers get their way, they, they everything would be GFCI anyway. So yeah, I can't you know, and I can't say the whole lot of that. Being being, I work for a manufacturer, I'm like yeah, if the manufacturers get their way, but in this case, it's true statement. You know, on on his plans, I noticed that it said um, opt O P T room, and I'm and I'm gonna say that that's optional family room. And he explained in the beginning of the video that well, change, they had some changes. Room. That had some changes. And when I did track homes like this, man, that was probably the hardest thing for myself and my guys to do was to keep up with the change orders, bill for them properly, um, get paid from them properly. I mean, there was just so much that went into those darn optionals. We got to the point where we would not even rough in certain areas because we would go to a room and we would see it framed a certain way and we'd go, no you know, BS, this is going to be changed to this. And by golly, after a while, they, the framer would come back and change the framing because that the way that that layout was, they should have added a, a, a bigger closet or an extra bathroom or something like that, right? So my guys would run the home run to a switch box or, or something like that. 
that we knew was going to stay, but then we would stop right there in certain areas, knowing that they would come back and frame it and that the layout would change or they would do this option. So it's a, it's a thin line because, you know, again, you want to be in and out, right? You got, this guy might have a hundred houses that he has to get done and he's on a timeline and he's go, go, go. And then you get. Well, that's why, that's why he hasn't, that's why he hasn't done any more videos. You know, he doesn't have the time anymore. He's just, he's wham, bam, you know? I, yeah, for sure. Now, now, Lloyd asked a question. You got to remember that if you go to an island or peninsula and, and you're serving that, that, that small appliance brand circuits to serve the island and peninsula, peninsula, um, that's not peninsula, peninsula. Um, and, but in our case, we has an example of where it was a framed up uh, island or a framed up peninsula or something like that, where the backside was also serving a, 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 a family room, let's say, uh, then no, your you the code made it very clear that your small appliance brand circuit serves a countertop and it can serve the wall space receptacles in a kitchen, in a dining room, uh, in a pantry. It did not say it could serve the wall receptacles in a family room. So yeah, it's there. And you might think, hey, I'm already there. Let me just go on and pop down if this was facing a family room and the inspector said that that was part of the dining, uh, the family room. And that's not going to work. You can't use that small appliance brand circuit to serve that receptacle because that one would be serving the family room. And the code is very clear in the code. So when it talks about it, again, serving the countertops in, in the code, you know, so if you're in 210.52B and you're too, ooh, yummy, in 210.52C and you're serving that, if those wall receptacles, if we determine that that is a wall receptacle that's serving the family room, it can't be on the small appliance brand circuit. So it may not be overkill. Depends on what that is, okay? If it's a, again, a framed up wall that's being used as an island and you can determine it's a wall, then that is different than if I took two cabinets and stuck them in the middle of the floor then that's not a wall that's just cabinets then the back side of that would not be serving wall space because those are cabinets but if i put a two by four wall and i built cabinets against it then i built a wall on the back side of that wall if that was facing the uh, family room then that's part of the family room so again depending on how you get you got to look at every situation differently to determine whether or not it's overkill or I can't do double duty because the code won't let you use a small appliance to serve receptacles that are not in the kitchen, the pantry, the dining room, that type of thing. So yeah, hopefully that answers that question for you. It's not like you can turn around and go, well, that's a dining room. Well, no, because obviously on the plans, it says family room and they're going right. to go by what the label of that room is. You can't just cross it out, redline it and go dining room. And, and, <laughs> and, for, and for some inspectors, they might look at that island. If they had a kitchen and you had the island and then you had the family room, they might even look at that other side of that island as the line of demarcation that separates the kitchen from the family room. Now, you might say, no, no, it goes another three feet. Dude, it's in the eye of the beholder when it comes to that inspector, right? Uh, now, if I'm looking at a set of drawings and I see the island set back and then I see some space and I see some identifying features on the wall that allows me to develop a line of demarcation, I would love for a, a, you know, to, to mark that on the drawings. If that's the case and it's still in the kitchen, it's still in the kitchen. But there are a lot of applications where the maybe a peninsula might be where it does separate a family room. And if it's a framed up with a wall and then the cabinets and, are put against it, if you frame it up like a wall with two by fours, it's a wall. That's different than taking a cabinet and sticking it on the floor and putting a counter on top of it. If you frame it up like a wall, then it becomes a wall. And so you have to be very careful in that. So it could be different. Every jurisdiction could look at that totally different. So in this case, I don't know enough of his drawings, uh, but it looks like small track that that's a family room. Uh, and behind him was the kitchen. Uh, but, uh, I don't know, maybe he'll walk around. I don't remember. I know he's done some other videos with this one, but I don't know. He kind of has jumped around. I think Jay had need from one house to another. Uh, and it probably was just filming and recording and getting a good opportunity to film. Again, we all struggle with that, but, uh, uh, but in the most part he's, he's doing pretty good. So we've forgotten all his bad habits up to this point. We're okay with him again. So. 
So right here in this family room, uh, it's usually always a fan-like combo, and we're going to need 14-3 for that. So this one we can't do, but we're going to go back and we're going to go ahead and run this dining room like switch leg. Okay, hold on. Let me pause that. Okay, so Jay, was, we can kind of get a little bit, so we were right. So, here, so here's a good example. All right, so see this line right here? This is the line in his drawings. This is a line of demarcation. So for the person that was watching, so all of this, and he called this a hall. I wouldn't call this a hall. I call this part of the kitchen. Yeah, it, so, I, and that's what I think. He, 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 he called it a hall, but if you notice, he did say, He's going to run 12 2 yeah. on that small pine. So I think his terminology is mixed up, but he does, he is going to serve it with the, with the small pliant. So, so I'm going to have 12 here, but also remember that I'm going to have 12 for these receptacles in this dining room. Yeah. And it can be touchy for folks because at this point, you have some receptacles and these are going to be probably on 15. Knowing me, I probably would hit the lighting. And then I would probably hit these receptacles all on one because there's, you know, there's not but like one, two, three, four, five, six receptacles here. I wouldn't say anything on the back of the here is considered part of the 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 uh, family room. In this case, it's called living room here. So that's a, you know, but I would say since it sits back from the line of demarcation, in this case, it's the end of the counter, which gives you a good line of demarcation to support you. If you were trying to say, no, Mr. Inspector, I don't want any receptacles here to be a part of this. It's because the cabinet extends beyond it. Again, everyone's going to be different, but here I've got some good references to do that. And one good thing is every room is labeled. It gets immensely tougher on a drawing in an argument with an inspector if you have a drawing that's not labeled properly, because then they can call, well, this is this is this room, and I don't have nothing that tells me this or that. Now I get it. We do a lot of you know a lot of uh, no drawings as built residential. We just grab them and go to spec or whatnot. But in here, he's got some things. But for me, I'd probably put one, two, three, four, five, six receptacles. No, these are dining rooms, so I'm count not counting those. So it's one, two, three, four, plus the lighting. Yep. I'm, that's yep. probably that's one, one circuit for me, and I'm probably going to pick the kitchen lighting up in as well if it, for me uh, because that is fixed load. And again, with the lighting today, we're not talking incandescence. So um, these receptacles will get used very little. Uh, there. So, you know, maybe a TV, but that's it. And then that means nothing's going to be used in these other ones. So, uh, again, it's up to you, but that's probably how I would have laid it out. I probably would have done the kitchen lighting, the lighting in here, and then I would have picked up these receptacles all on a 15 amp. That's how I would have done it, probably. I got to have to look at it, but that's, you know, all within the realm. You know, those folks that say, no, you can't have more than eight receptacles on it. You can't have more than 10 total items on it. Well, it's all about the load, right? I could have a hundred cool. damn receptacles. Of, yeah. Huh? It, it, as it sounds like going back to my TikTok where, where I was telling guys, you know, hey, um, I stopped it here at Ada EOC and, you know, I left my room. I left some space to add some more receptacles on a 15 amp. And, and one guy said exactly what you said. No, you can't go past eight. It's the law. You know, and then, <laughs> and then I think you made a comment and he I was did. like, I'm, I'm just an apprentice, bro. Like, hey man, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like I know when it's re when you get there and you're like you're like let's go. You ready? Yeah. Then they go, oh, oh, wait a minute. I didn't know. You know, I think if you're gonna opine about it, at least learn something about it, right? You know, they they start whapping the you know, blah, 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 and then I'm sitting there going, I, you know, another app that's bad for this. I don't know if you have it. A lot of people have it out there. It's called um, God. Uh, Is it trade, trade hounds? Yeah, trade hounds. Oh my god! If somebody posts something and people will jump on somebody, but they never post a code reference, but they swear something's like gospel. And I'm sitting there going, you know what? This is backyard code experts. I'm like, just because they learn from Johnny, from Billy, from Willie, from Buck, from Jehoshaphat, from whatever, and now they're all of a sudden posting crap. But oh, that's wrong. That's wrong. I'm like, okay. You might be right, but how about this? Why don't you post a code reference to support yourself? That yeah. way, that way you can have something to point to. You know, they're like, well, Paul, Ed, I don't have, we don't all have a code like you have it. Okay. Whatever. Fast tracks and you'll. 
Dang, you'll be, yeah. you'll be a step closer, that's for sure, because yeah. every competency test I've ever done, I've always had to um, not only say the answer, give the answer, but also have a code reference that yeah. supports that answer. And that's what separates your program from any of uh, any other program Some that rules. I've ever seen, I like that. Uh, I like, you know, I like ruling. I like that rule of thumbs. Last I checked, I hadn't seen that anywhere in the code. Hold on, I'll look real quick. Rule of thumbs are BS. Support it with code. I like the rule of thumbs. All right. I like how you got the double plans here. I like how you put the plan on the plan. Makes I put sense. The, yeah, plan, no, no, double no, plan. How, how he put how he has the plan on the wall there. I love how he stapled that plan. That is the that's what we do. We put the plan on, on in between two studs, and then he added his own. You know how he's inserting the the, the mm -hmm. plan wrong. Mm -hmm. So now you get a double vision of it, and and it's kind of nice because we get to see the living, the kitchen, the dining. I still wish that that dining kind of had a line going through it to, you know, know that on the right side of that door going outside is the living. But I mean, you so, just have to match imaginary line, right? Go, yeah, right so, there. You so cut so so here's the line. When I was talking earlier about how you have to come up with a line of demarcation based mm -hmm. on what you've got, that's a great point. So since this room comes all the way out to this wall and this is a right angle and this is yeah. labeled dining, then we would say this is the line of demarcation and we would draw it across here. Yep. So all of this would be dining. Anything on this side of the line of demarcation would be living room. And you know what? That's about all you can freaking do, right? That's I it, mean, man. That's all you and, can do. And I think most inspectors would be like, yeah, that's cool. You know, at least the ones I trained, they better say that's cool. And we're going to have it. We're going to get it down if it isn't. All right. All right, let's go. Well, I basically. All right, we got to pay the bills for his commercial. The internet, which wasn't something I'd ever done before. So I'm going to fold to my light and then I'm going to staple back before I put it in the box. Okay, talking about Swiss sequence, in this case, uh, you well, let's answer that question real quick. Uh, Jay. So Adam asked, how come there's a lighting design here, but there isn't anywhere else? Because I would venture to say it's because this was a family room or living room optional. So it was probably option and, it, and, and they spent time developing the option because there's extra costs like putting in the ceiling fan box and all this. So that's probably why they did it for that one, because it wasn't optional. Prior to that, it was probably just, if you think about these houses, probably just was a spec, you know, um, although he probably does this home cookie cutter. Can't hear you, Jay. Mute's on. I, I apologize. You you might have had a switch receptacle in there. Who knows? You know, yeah. but again, that with that optional, you want to know what the customer is paying for. So you're installing what the customer is paying for. And and also, um, Walter, if you go down a little bit, Walter had a question um, about can you put lighting and receptacles on the um, right there? Is running your lighting and outlets separately wrong if you will no it's not you, you can you want to if you want to if you want to run your 15 amp you were not talking small appliance brand circuits right totally different can't do the lighting with that but if you want to run 15 amp or even if you want to run 20 amp brand circuits for this i mean nothing says it has to be 15 and 14 gauge if you want to run your receptacles in your living room and you want to you want to run 12 gauge go for it um can you put your lighting and your receptacles on the same absolutely Absolutely. There's nothing that says you cannot do that. that. That it's permitted to do. As long as you're doing it on circuits that are permitted to to, to allow you to do both. But mm -hmm. like you said, small appliance, you wouldn't be able to share your lighting load with those um, receptacles serving the countertop in the kitchen and dining room. But you're mm -hmm. right. In this instance, that's what he's doing. He's going from that three-gang box, that lighting box right there on the corner in the kitchen, and he's jumping it over to the exterior wall hitting that porch light, dropping it down to that receptacle outlet, and then finishing it off at the EOC at the receptacle by 
the kitchen, but it's it's in the living. So and so in in and for Walter, for your reference, go to two ten dot twenty three a, which is fifteen and twenty amp brand brand circuits. It says a fifteen or twenty amp brand circuit shall be permitted to supply lighting units or other utilization equipment or a combination of both, and shall comply with two ten dot twenty three a one and a two. Okay, so again, you could do oh. lighting. You could do receptacles. You could do both. Just be prepared for it and know that that is unique to that. That doesn't have anything to do with small appliance brand circuits. Has nothing to do with the laundry brand circuit. Things like that, right? Doesn't have to do with if you have a garage, you have the garage brand circuit. You can only serve the receptacles that are for each vehicle bay. There's different rules with it, but we're talking general purpose. General purpose brand circuits, 15, 20 amp lighting and receptacles, perfectly fine. The one that's going to have a given load is going to be the lighting because, again, the load is what the load is, uh, whatever the wattage is. Um, and right. you, always wanna use the, you always want to use the max, whatever the maximum yep. they could put it at. Um, and when the receptacles, you know, there's nothing. If, we hear this thing all the time, Jay, about 180 VA per strap. All the that, time. That's commercial. Time. That is not residential. I mean, you do need to use a little common sense, right? But it oh. is a little different, Okay. Now, Adam says some customers want them on separate circuits. And you know what? There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with putting them on separate circuits. But if the, if the drawing or me as an electrical contractor, if I bid that project to only do one circuit on that run and you want me to do two, well, now I got to pick up the cost of another arc fault circuit. Oh, yeah. And those things are cheap. You know, and and, yep. and now I got to take the fact of running another cable all the way from the panel. Well, let's say that sucker's all the way in the garage and it's uh, 95 feet away. You know, wh- where does that cost come into? So that's where you go and you say, hey, listen, I don't mind running you another circuit. Heck, I'd be glad to run you another circuit. But if, excuse me, but if I do, it's going to cost you X amount. Are you okay with that? Yes, I am. Sign here. Sign. Yep. Signature. I'm yeah. running that guy. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, if, if they're okay with it, I'm okay with it. The other thing to remember, and O brought it up, uh, and it's the reason why I gave example of the small appliance in the laundry and then jump to the garage and not say bathroom, because bathroom, typically you would run the branch circuit for the bathroom. It covers the receptacle that serves the sink within three feet of the sink. Okay, That's mm-hmm. what its purpose is. But the code does have an allowance uh, for you to do that in 210.11C3. And that allows you to also pick up the lighting inside of that bathroom on that 20 amp, as long as it doesn't leave that bathroom. If you're right. not going to jump out of that bathroom and hit another bathroom, you're going to bring that branch circuit, that home run hits that bathroom and stops in that bathroom, then you're okay. All right? yeah. The only thing you got to worry about at that point is if you have a heat light combo or something like that, then you got to worry about the rules with 210.23 a1 or a2 and that is depending on equipment fastened in place and can exceed uh the percentages that are involved with the fastened in place versus uh cord and plug okay so there's a difference between 80 percent and 50 percent and how you apply those things but that's yeah. specific for bathrooms if you're just going to hit the receptacles in that bathroom with it then you could leave that bathroom and go hit another bathroom's receptacles if you want but you can't hit the lighting. But if you want to do everything in that bathroom, then you can do that on that 20 amp brand circuit, but it's got to stay in that bathroom. Okay. That type of thing. Yeah. And, and, and I think you're right. When you get some of that um, special equipment in there, like the heat lamps, maybe the heated floors, uh, oh, yeah. just out of the norm, you, you want to not only follow code, but you want to follow the manufacturer's instruction. And, so when I did the remodel here for my mother-in-law's room, which is right across the hall from, from my office, we installed floor heat. Well, the floor heat said um, run a dedicated 20-amp circuit to it. So guess what I did? I ran a 20-amp circuit right from that panel, my subby, bro, subby? right over to that floor heat, and that was it. That was the only box it hit. And, and then I ran another one, like Paul's saying. I ran another 20 to the bathroom switch i fed all my lighting i fed my pendants the um shower light the exhaust fan and i jumpered power over to my receptacle serving the countertop my eoc and a circuit and i was good right there I, the, I didn't exceed my loads you put the gfci in right there and done yep 
that was so, it. Yeah, so again, so many different ways to do it. This is, this is why I, I love electrical is, mm-hmm. you know, is it, it, it really makes you think about all the little pieces, and I can't think of any other trade that does that, the plumbing trade. You know, again, we joke about plumbers and all that. I mean, they got to know their thing. Um, sure. HVAC guys have to know their thing. You know, they have to deal with a lot of the air dynamics and how they run the ducts and the, and the drafting. And uh, But when it comes to electrical, um, it's, it, it, it's the only one of the suits that can, that can kill you. And of course you're going to, your family's going to be interacting with it. God, look at the amount of wire he's got in his hand going to that box. Oof. Anyway, uh, it looks like a Grunberg okay. job there. So, you know, that's like, it's like three feet of extra scrap. Got to have those pigtails. I'm just saying. Um, no stabbing. Don't, don't even get on stabbing. Okay. Don't, I'm sorry. Let's, 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 only, let's don't let's talk backstabbing with all that wire. Um, so any rate, any rate. So, yeah. So there's so many things. And Joel, you're so right. I don't know how many contractors out there are afraid to do change orders. Um, I, you know, I love my brother to death, but when he does work, if he has to refix something, he, he'll he eat it. Uh, even if it's something for the customer, not me. If we deviate and we agree to something and you deviate from it, I'm hitting you. It doesn't matter if it's a little amount. I'm yeah. still hitting you with something. I'm just Stop. I'm just hitting you with something, just so we know, you know, up front. You know, that type of thing. All right, let's get back into it. Only we can stretch an 11-minute video into an hour or something. All right, here we go. You might see this as a little different. You might want to come up here and have your first switch as the family light, and then your second switch as the family. Have you just started realizing it, Jay, that he calls this a family room, and we title it a family room, but everything on the drawing says living room? Have you noticed that? I just noticed that. I just like, I'm like, he's family room, everything. And I even labeled this one family room. His episode is called family room, but we're talking living room. Right. I wonder so, on that um, optional, if it changed the wording, because no, maybe it, it showed, room, but, I, but it now all of a sudden it showed so, it on yeah. both of them. It showed it on both of them. It said living room. Yeah. But I think they were both the same plan. I think they're both optional. I don't, I don't know what the original drawing of it but yeah you're right he just the terminology is throwing me off <laughs> yeah but again remember we we're not being picky on the terms family room tomato tomato potato patata you know good news is family room living room both of which 15 amp circuits okay afci is required no gfci is required for that part it's all good it's all the same and and then the um, dining light, but I don't even want to switch this around to where I got my family light because you usually go light, light fan. Fan's always on the back end, so I don't want to have my fan light, my dining, and then go to the fan, fan switch leg. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my dining room switch like this first switch because it's not wrong. It, it's still an immediate light, just as far away. So I'm gonna make this my first switch leg going into the box. And then I'll, I'll run my fan light. So I'll have dining in my first position <laughs> and then my family light. That's a lot of wire. I'm, that's a lot of cable. I'm just, I'm just saying. I almost could feel Jay going, he's on, you're on mute again. See, it's got him so flustered he's on mute. No. I, I know I'm, I'm over here because I'm, I'm I'm actually saying profanity and I and I can't say that I'm over here just going, what the you know I mean the rule is right there. It's not like it's a pre-run where you try to stretch it out and and oops my bad I got a little maybe, extra. The maybe we're just is right there. Maybe we're just we're just being nitpicky now. I mean yeah, it's his no, it's his no, it's his, his it's his fine. cable. He paid his, for it. That's know. right. All right. I'm worried about. Just joking yeah. with you, Brandon. You're doing good, buddy. Let's go, good. Brandon. All right. And my Sorry. second, and then my family fan in the last one. And anytime you're dealing with like multi gang boxes, if it makes you feel good to go ahead and mark the wire, then just do it, you know? Sometimes like getting used to this way of putting it in the right slot can. I would mark I it. I wouldn't mark it that far down because that's getting cut off by somebody. 
<laughs> I was going to say, I would mark it uh, closer to where I'm going to staple it on the stud before it goes into the box, just in case someone ever clips off the sheathing. Then you're not like, oh, crap, bro, now let me chase this wire. Not that he's doing the wrong thing, because he's probably going to be the one to go back and, and oh, yeah. trim it for me. I would mark it on the on the sheathing that's going up to the stud, because even if I cut it off in the box... I don't lose that marking. That's and all. And we're not and we're not being haters because haters gonna hate, 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 hate. We're not no, we're not. We're just we're just saying. Just saying. It can be a little difficult, but even I mark the wires sometimes when it starts get to, getting to be too much. <laughs> Three right. feet away from the box. All the right. Floor, like I said, um, there's no covered porch right here, so all it's getting is a coach light, and there's no floods or anything. So all we gotta do is stub one out this OSB, and then we'll get back to it with how to finish it with, um, it, depending on what siding you get. Uh Here's a little tip. If you're gonna be poking the NMB out that hole, uh, personally, I like to cut my boxes in, okay? It just, me, I don't wanna have to come in. Here's why I cut my boxes in, Jay, because if there's a siding person coming in, I want them to cut the siding around it. I put my box yep. up there uh, and let them, you know, and, and people say, well, how do you know the depth of whatever? I, you know what? I don't know. I, I've been doing it for years and I never had an issue. I will tell you, if your box sticks out a little bit too far, it's still not going to affect the ability because usually there's a canopy on that light and you can get it on there. It, it's got a gap in there. So, if, you know, better to be error on the side of too much than not enough but even if yes. it was a little less, I easily can put one of those plastic extenders in it if I had to. Now, if you're going to poke that wire out, let me tell you, cable out, let me tell you, at least wrap the end of it, wrap the end up with electrical tape or something so that you don't get moisture up in the and wicking up into the end of it. You can say, ah, it don't matter, Paul. But if you saw that torrential rain that he had when it started, there are inspectors that will look at that and look at that end and say, nope, you left this exposed I want you to replace it. And that's the last thing you want to happen. And if you say that doesn't happen, I'm going to tell you I work for a wire and cable manufacturer and I get the calls all the time sure. where inspectors sure. want it to be replaced and, and, and the electrician's calling me to write something to get them out of it to, to say, it's okay, tell them it's okay. Tell them it's fine, it's fine. I'm like, <laughs> you know, so if you say that that never will happen, I'm looking right at you and saying you're full of crap. Because I get these calls yep. weekly, just saying, wrap the end in electrical tape, Jay. And well, kind of like what you said, I'd cut it in now because if you go back and cut it, you're taking a chance of nicking your cable as well. Because what are you cutting mm -hmm. it with? You know, right now I can, without that cable being poked out where his hole is, instead of doing that size of hole, I would just take my pilot bit with a hole saw and cut cut out the box. You know, if I'm using a remodel like a mm -hmm. 4 or I, maybe I might just. Maybe I might just mount a um, little, what do they call those? Those little small pancake boxes, you know, the the little guys, and, and mm -hmm. mount it on there. Again, it's easier to cut it in now with, with, like you said, without the siding, and so they cut around it than to put your cable in there and, and maybe get it damaged. But maybe that's what he's going to do. Yeah, we don't know. And, and, it, and it could be brick. And if it's brick, I usually poke my cable out, and then I will stick a box on it, and hopefully the brick layers will put it in. You know, So we, we don't know. But I'm just saying, this is just a little advice, you know, that you might run into. And by the way, that light is required because it is an entrance to the, the dwelling and you have to provide illumination to 10.70. So that's his illumination. Don't have to have floodlights. Uh, incidentally, if you had a floodlight on the corner and it did put enough illumination at the door, at the door entry, then you wouldn't need the one at the entry. The floodlight would work fine. That would be okay because the rule is about illumination, not the lighting outlet. It's about the illumination at the entrance sure. and egress. So uh, that type of thing. Uh, you might have to put either a three and a half inch pancake or you might have to do uh, oct or an octagon box. Is your uh, pancake? Depends if you got vinyl siding yep. or um, hardy plank or brick. And if you got break, that's a whole different thing. But we're gonna get into that when we start finishing up the light. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put some staples in this, just to hold my wire in place because I don't want it falling out of this hole.
Okay, so we're just going to get past this audio here. I got enough out there? Yeah. Okay, so this is my switch leg, so it's going to go into the next slot away from the stud. Wow. That's a lot of wire. I can save this guy some money, I'm just saying. So Jay, you cannot give your guys any more crap, okay? Because this this is how they learn to use so much cable, is they watched videos that show them you have a, better to have too much than not enough. I reckon. There you go. Sure. But when when is enough? When is too much? Too much. You know. When, when, I, that's that's. I, I, too I, much, I too think much. when too much is when you're the owner. Yeah, that, that's true. That's, that's true. <laughs> when you're the owner, when you're the owner, too much. Do you, you, you can define when too much is, is more than necessary when you're the owner. When you're not the owner, you, you obviously don't care. You know, you, you almost have to go to your guys in a different type of manner, though. You know, you go, hey, instead of going, hey, you got, guys, you guys are doing too much wire, blah, blah, blah. You say, you know, if you if you only did 18 inches instead of, 36 inches that's less wire to clean up right like just saying like you could you could easily just pick up that little chunk instead of that bigger chunk and maybe you have to cut into two or threes because at the end of the day you're cutting it two to three times where if you yeah, just but, do 18 you're cutting yeah, it once so yeah but boss that would that would cut into my scrap money you know my scrap copper i'm just saying ah, reminding true. reminding folks 300.14 you only need to have six inches of free conductor Measured from the point where it enters into the actual box. Okay. Not 300 or yeah. 600, just six. Right. Yeah. So just, just saying, so there's, there's other rules where depending on the size of your box, you have to make sure you have at least three inches from the outside edge of it, uh, of the box. So go read 300.14 and you're going to realize that this is way too much cable, but Hey, he's paying. We're not paying. So it's all good. Did you notice that this is the one of the only times I've seen him actually go underneath the window where there were those king stud packs? Usually he was going oh, over yeah. the top. Of the he's getting a more he's getting a little more relaxed on this job, or maybe he had someone else drill him out ahead of him. Well, you know, have I, you ever? Did I can tell right here he needs nail plates. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, he favored that because right that's there. the only way you can do it. it. You you can't really get it in there unless you're bending your drill bit at an angle. Work. That's, gonna that's out. what is that? One two three, four, five, maybe even six studs there. Wow, that's a lot. I, I would have just gone over just like he did traditionally with all the other. He did make some comment about doing it, but you know, um, you know, he's, I bet you he's someone drilled this out for him. I almost guarantee you someone jumped into this house, drilled it out. And then his crew came back and, and did the cable. Cabling. Maybe. Yeah. Because he's not showing any drilling in this episode, but I guess he's just pulling. So, um, yeah, he's cable on this one, but just so folks out there know every other episode, he went up and over all these windows. He did not drill through the jacks. He didn't drill any of that stuff. So this is, this is a first that somebody, at least somebody's drilling through all these, but yes, folks, he does need nail plates there. It looks like the edge of that board hole to the edge of that framing member. And again, we're playing Monday morning quarterback on this, but it looks to be, less than an inch and a quarter from the edge of the board hole. Remember, it's not from the cable. It's from the edge of the board hole to the end edge of the framing member. Also, I should mention, Jay, that in 2023, the code's going to clarify that it what we always intended anyway, but I guess people didn't get it. And I've been preaching about it forever. Remember when I tell you it's on both sides of the framing member, but everybody said, no, it only applies to the part that's inside the room. No, it applies on both sides. So you, I used to explain how you had to knock the little points off the nail plate and try to get a nail plate back there because at the end of the day, it applies to both sides. Well, 2023, it's going to say edges. So it's going to apply to both edges that's of the frame member. When they put that, outside osb on because you can't just put the nail plate on the outside wood uh, osb because you're not putting it on the actual stud mm -hmm. you know so like you said you're gonna have to either wow that's gonna be that yeah, one they, will be yeah, they cut the osb 
um, to get your nail plates on there. Or like I said, by the time you make it through this one here, uh, it's probably coming out close to the wall on the backside. So in that point, you could probably take a nail plate. Yeah, you, you could take a nail plate, cut the points off of it, stick it back there with your screwdriver, try to dra drive it back behind the stud. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. You know, because yep. it's probably only going to affect the last one or so. I of see this what you're saying. Yeah, because you're, you're already starting on the front side yeah. of that one. You just put the nail plate on the front, but then when you get towards the end, you would take off those or, or straighten those little clips out and just try to fit it behind knowing yeah. that. You know, it's gonna. You got you like you said. You have to get it in there because it's mm -hmm. sandwiched between that OSB and that. I get what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the only way you do it, and it's always been that way. But people always thought yeah. it's just the side facing the room, and I'm like, no. It's when it says one and a quarter from the edge of the board to from the board hole to the framing member. It didn't say only on the inside portion. So the code, just because 2023 is going to clarify that does not mean that it never was the intent and it was uh, applied incorrectly. It's just trying to clarify it even more, but that's the way it always has been. Again, from the edge of the board hole to the edge of the framing member, it didn't matter which side it was. Okay, it, it still was the same rule. So anyway, that's kind of some of the stuff you're getting in the, you're going to get in the 2023. A little, you know, some of those little clarif clarifying things, right? So... So that's good. It's yeah. really good. All right, let's go. So that's the rest of the 14-2 in this room. Now we got to go and do the 14-3 for the span light. There's his little lazy Susan there. I should remind, remind folks that he doesn't show it, but typically you have to maintain the rating of that assembly. So all of those spaces, you know, you have the spread of uh, the fire and products of combustion. So 300.21. So rock wool, uh, insulation, the great stuff, orange, all those that had that, uh, that are going to be maintaining the rating of that assembly. <clears throat> The insulator might do that. Me as an electrician, we always, that was always, if we drilled it, we sealed it. That was our saying, right? If we drilled it, we sealed it. That type of scenario. So, uh, but that's 300.21 is maintaining that rating of that assembly so that you don't have the spread. And again, one little hole like that allows oxygen to get to if something catches on fire in that framing member there. And it would speed this thing up, act like a stack effect and it would just act like a blowtorch and just spread. So that's why you seal it off. So you choke it off. Kind of one of the concepts there. But you said y'all don't seal y'all's that you're you y'all's y'all let them come back and do it. But your inspectors doesn't fail it. Most of the jurisdictions around that I'm familiar with, they make that's part of the electrician's responsibility when they're looking at their hole, their installation. Uh, you know, but I have heard was some of them say, look, that's the insulator is going to pick that. The problem was electrical guys would say, inspectors would say, and my inspectors, when I was the head of jurisdiction, we'd always say, yeah, but we're not going to be here to see that it was done. So how do we know that it was done? Well, maybe they had an insulation inspection, right? And, but yeah. that person has to sign off of it. But again, you for grounds, electricians usually there, but the inspe electrical inspector is not there for those. But the builder's there. So does the builder sign off for that? In some jurisdiction, they do. In other jurisdictions, the building inspectors go, that ain't my responsibility, bro. So it's teamwork. And we just didn't give them that option. We, we, we sprayed all our holes. And I, it used to be a competition for us that, you know, and I'd give bonuses and see who did the faster, that type of thing. Uh, but uh, you, you say you just let your insulators do it? Well, yeah, so the con Contractors usually have the insulators do it, and I think it's just because it gives them a little bit more money in their pocket as well, you know, because, okay. again, if they say, hey, I'll insulate this whole place with just stuff inside the wall, you know, insulation, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, just 500 bucks. But if I do the foam caulking, 
maybe it's an additional 250. Well, what's it to a guy that, like you said, that can go around and race and get them done within an hour and the material's only maybe 50 bucks worth. Now you got an hour invested, 50 bucks worth of material, and you, and you take that from your 250, you probably p- profited maybe, you know, 150 bucks. So again, I think it's just one of those things that since the basements are really small, it's just let those guys do it, you yeah. know? And, but I've had to come back and like, like I've told you before, I had to come back and like maybe add a receptacle or a whatever it is and drill a couple holes, then I'll take some foam with me. Cause, I'll, cause right. that's what the GC said. Hey, take some foam with you, bro. Make sure you cock those holes, you know? And it's like, yes, sir, we got it. And the thing with that foam is some of those bottles, well, most of them, you buy at Home Depot, eight bucks, whatever, four bucks. I don't even know the cost. I might be off. But yeah, once you spray it, stuff's expensive. You got to use it, because because then you can't save. It's not like you can wire nut it right. and and save it. You know, it's that's it. It's a one time use. So yeah, it's a it's it's a, it, it's air act. Once you start going, it feels the, the biggest part is the tube. Once you start going, that stuff hardens and cures. It's it's done. Yes. We used to get the great stuff, pro professional ones, the bigger ones with the with the applicators, uh, and we would spend a lot of time having to clean the applicators because you can, you could screw on a new can, but if you didn't clean out that and it can't and you could get the cleaner uh, aerosol cleaner ones that hook on it and you spray it through it and it'll clean it out. So, but but if we forget and leave it, and guys would leave one, dude, those applicators weren't cheap, and they would be now. Usually, when you buy the big cans of it, they, you know the supply houses that would give us, they would give us some of the applicators. So we would be treating those things like gold. So you have to clean them, keep them clean. But if you didn't, and it was filled up with that stuff, it's toast. You're not going to reuse it. Um, Walter says that he's situation where he didn't run. I guess he didn't run 14.3 up, but ran two separate uh, 14.2s up there, and then they end up getting a remote. Yeah, so. Um, you just have an extra leg up there, you know, and, uh, so you, you pretty much, Hey, you gave him a bonus. It's up there. So it's, uh, you know, you never know what you might need it for. You never know. They might change it a fan later down the road and they don't have a remote for it. And so, yeah, at least they've got it set up for it. So at least you, you've done that little extra for them, right? Yeah. If their intent is for, for my, for myself, if, if they've, put in the money to do a ceiling fan, the box that's rated for a ceiling fan, then I run a 14.3. Now, whether or not I put a single pole or a single gang nail on or box to a two gang, is that I'm going to ask the customer, hey, are you do you want this situation? Because most likely with their homes, they, they have a switch that doesn't do anything. And they get mm-hmm. frustrated because they're like, man, that second switch just doesn't do anything. And it's like, well, because it's designed – to be your fan switch you know your first switch as you walk in would be your light your second switch would be for your fan you how many bought a re- how many callbacks you think people get to and you know, they call their electrician and go this got a switch that does nothing <laughs> oh, does nothing I mean, every, every home i go into i'm not kidding you every home i go into after i start talking to them about what we're going to do in their options they go man i wish i i wish someone would have talked to me about that when this home was built because I go upstairs and I don't know what, you, you know, anything are. And it's like, well, well, it's because the electrician installed it the way that the plan said. And there's nothing wrong with how they did it. Right. It's just nowadays, now the fans have a remote. So really, mm-hmm. you only need, to be honest with you, all you need is a constant power really up there. You yeah. don't even need a switch. The switch is just an override, you know. But at the end of the day, I, I always give them the option. I say, listen, we can do a single box. Knowing that late, later down the line, you could do those stack switches yep. if you if you buy one that doesn't have a remote, or for your case, you're going to buy a remote. So let's just run a 14.3, and I'll just cap the red. You know, obviously I'm talking you know different language to them, but I just I'll just cap one of the wires. But for future, it's a good upsell, you know. And and then we give them the 14.3. So. Mhm. Yep. Different options. That's a lot of scrap. Well, you, you can't have one. You you can't have one long and then the rest shorter <laughs> than that. One. That's so you true. Have at least consistent on the length. If 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 one's gonna be this big, they're all gonna be this big. So I like his <laughs> consistency. He, he's he, yeah, he's he's consistent with it. I love it, man. Now it's wired up. 
here's the funny thing. In this location, he likes this little pancakes. I do not. And I'm assuming you like I, little I'm boxes. gonna yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna assume this is a fan box and I wanna assume that it's got all the self-supporting and all this stuff. But me, I'm doing a slip over plastic, baby. This slips right over top of that. It's right in the middle of that joist there. Boom, that's perfect for that little cheap boom. Yeah. And it's so it, much it, more, so much more room in there than in that little pancake. Mm. But hey. You like the side ones, right? The mount on the side, the flat, but then it's got a side. We can go half mooners, the, the halfers, right? Or you you like the little pancake fan boxes? No, if it's going right on the stud, I would say probably that the half moon style ones. Um, normally, we do the spanners just because then we know if the center yeah, of the if, room is if, set. If, if that is Zach center of the room, though, how you can't use a spanner there. Right, then I would do the half, half moon, moon or... Whatever, whatever we decided. I, I have no problem with this install. All right. Hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this wall. Okay. Good. Family room. Mm -hmm. All right, living room. Whatever he said. All right. I was, so, I was, was going to say if he didn't put that ground screw in, I was waiting. He made that little clip on turd or not. <laughs> and 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 I'm I, I I don't know. I mean just again you never know if you're going to appear on my episode of Turd or not. In, in his case, he would not. He would have passed. So good job, he, Brandon. He, it's all right. <laughs> Is that his real name or are you just calling him Brandon? All right. I thought it was his name. I don't know what his name. I just thought you're like saying, let's go, Brandon. Brandon. I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know, what you, I didn't know what you were doing. I didn't know if that's his name. I watched eight episodes and I'm not sure what his name. Maybe she called him Brandon. I don't know. It's his girlfriend. She should know. Maybe you know. I don't know. I just thought they were going, let's go, Brandon, you know. Oh. I don't know. So, anyway. Buddy, if that's not your name, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't take it back. It's already said. It's said. <laughs> Maybe that's his name. For, for So, from now on, I don't know how many more episodes we have with Brandon, but that is his name. We're going to call him Brandon from here on out. It's Brandon. Um, and we'll just, because we support him, we'll just say... Let's go, Brandon. Let's there go, you Brandon. Go. It works. All right. So, oh, all right. Well, uh, any feedback on this episode, uh, Jay? You know, again, it was the, it was the living room, and uh, uh, again, we kind of talked some good things here. We talked about lines of demarcation, how to separate what would be the dining room versus the living room. Um, and he basically, you know, stopped at his living room. That's where he kind of ended. Obviously he's, uh, and it's out of sequence. Cause I believe he's probably already done the kitchen, but this was in a different video sequence. Um, so he probably just recorded them in, you know, things like that. But, um, other than that, um, I don't see any, you know, anything, uh, out of the ordinary so far. He's, he's, he's still going good. He did you know, Hey, I'll tell you what I did notice. Jay. He didn't use one profanity in that entire video. Either his girlfriend got on him or what? He found Jesus. I'm just saying. That's right. That's right. The holy water was coming down in the beginning of the video. I'll tell you what. And he got hit with it because uh, you're right. And he was, he, he just put his head down and he went. You know, again, I think he's doing different homes. Some of these videos are at different homes. So, yep. you know, you wake up different attitudes some days. Life happens. So yep. um, I, I did like how he inserted the plans so that yep. you could see where he was going. That was pretty neat. Yeah, that was that really is, cool. So. That is new. That is new for him because he hasn't to this point uh, interjected that. It would have been neat to see that along the whole way, you know, when we're doing this thing, this commentary. It would have been neat for him to, I almost hate the fact that uh, obviously we'll move on to other videos, other 
presentations through the year as we do a bunch of these these again because these are different than our Thursday night gig. These we can do these anytime we want, and um, and we'll have other things to review. But it would have been nice up to this point if he had have gotten used to that insert. So every now and then his plans come up onto the screen because then it would have given us time to, you know, stop. Yeah, oh, we killed all that. There's no longer a turd of the week, and there is no longer spinning the wheel anymore. <laughs> that that ended on Thursday night with the uh, Electrify. The uh, so um, different now. Coffee hour. At some point, kicking it with the king. Yep, and yep. We'll, that, yeah, that's still coming. And we'll do these these pop up uh, pop up sessions uh, on different things. So you, you haven't gotten rid of us. It's just less structured to be every week because he is, Jay is slammed with this new app he's doing for his company uh, yep. and, and everything and, and so much stuff that I'm doing that I try to pick my moments because I don't have to prepare for shows. So when I pick my moments when I want to do a coffee hour, I'm just like, okay, turn it on, let's go. And so yeah. that's why you don't get a lot of notice. When it came to the weekly thing, you had to prepare and we noticed that we just couldn't, we just didn't have the time to prepare. So it wasn't and, fair. And, and again, not, not saying that, you know, we, we were asking everybody out there too, to try to come up with stuff and, and we weren't getting too much feedback as well on that. And it just, after a while, it just felt like we were going into the same avenues that we had already gone into before. And so we mm -hmm. were like, why don't we, why don't we set up a different direction for both of us and let's explore, you know, obviously Paul's big hit coffee hour and, and I'm doing doing my stuff here, getting set up TikTok. for the kick with the king. And yeah, yeah. the TikToks are, are are pretty are pretty fun, man. I enjoy those. Uh, they're fast, they're easy. I can do them out in the field. Um, but with with the new app, with the new system that we're doing, we're we're building a warehouse here in the back of the house here soon for the for the material. We're starting to um, you know the babies obviously still growing, so it's it's just hard to have that one structured time whereas in like paul was saying we can just jump on hey bro are you free or hey do you want to do something at this time yeah let's do it let's knock it out and then and then we can go on to it so love and, we, it. and it was, we work and we work best when we're spontaneous man we just get, like yeah, let's go true. let's do something you know it's always the better shows when we're like we're like let's go you know that type of thing so let's uh, hit it yep so all right uh jay's TikTok is uh basement king 12 Yep, the Basement King 12. So exactly what you see up there, the Basement King all in one, and then one, two, 12, mm -hmm. or one, two, however you want to look at it. And yeah, Tyler, come check it out, man. Uh, the the Turder Knots are pretty fun. Those are those are my those are my favorite. I love those, man. I, I get on there and and we uh, we have a good time. So yep, and mine is yep. obviously Master the NEC, which most of my platforms are Master the NEC. So love to catch you there as well. I don't do a whole lot of TikToking, but I post some stuff on TikToking, you know. So, you know, um, I actually just seen one that that you and I were both tagged in, and I don't know if you're gonna get to it or not because I know you've kind of gone away from from answering questions on on social platforms. But mm -hmm. uh, the electrician Edward, which he's he's a union guy who who again is is one of those out there that are trying to. Um, I don't want to say, t yeah, he's teaching people his, you know, showing people the, his knowledge is what he's doing. He's passing mm -hmm. his knowledge. On. I don't want to say he's, mm -hmm. he's an educator by any means, but he's, he's doing tips on, you know, um, passing exams. We all code, got things, we all got things to learn, man. Uh, more yeah, than and, and it's fun, you know, but he'd, he'd take you and I in a post and specifically you Did because he? he asked about, yeah. And he was asked about, uh, cause a guy of his, asked him about um, expansion fittings and and when they should be used and when they don't because it's there's a lot of misunderstanding on those and he did his best but he also reached out to you and said hey you know i i hope that that mr paul abernathy who i have of the utmost respect for maybe he'll jump on and, and give a better explanation or, or tell us what's up and and it's so true because we get to these point as installers and whether we're journeymen's masters contractors like myself and there's a certain point where we, you know, we, we do have to go to the professional, sure. you know, and, and, and you being that professional, um, it, it's just awesome to have someone like yourself who, who's able to answer questions or do the, um, ask Paul's or, or the coffee hour. So 
so thank you for for all you, we, you give man and and yep, what you and do we, for the trade. yep and we have a bunch of the, i have a bunch of those in the can coming up to ask paul they're flowing in you can do that over at paulabernathy.com all things you wanted to know Tell Edward, Edward, whatever, that he can always go over there and post stuff if he wants. If I don't always follow TikTok and Instagram, those are the two I don't always follow. Yeah. But anybody can ask code questions or secret of life questions if I know the answer to it over at paulabernathy.com. People don't realize all the different things that my hands are in. But I have a platform that allows me to answer questions for you as well, which normally you'd have to pay somebody or a consultant or... Yeah. It is available already, and it's been around for a while now, paulabernathy.com, and if you're selected, it'll be a podcast, and I have a bunch of those that we're ready to, to get out. I, I record them, uh, so if I haven't answered your question lately, it's probably in a recording uh, that's ready to be released, uh, but it's just so many things going on. That is one of the reasons we had to kind of pull back from the Electro 5, but doesn't mean we don't do these, uh, and I think you'll see that these are, are a lot, they're going to be more funner for everybody. And oh, don't be hating on the fact that I seem to have a video, you know, he, he, you know, Milwaukee boys. It, I'm just saying. The guy and and like my like one of my one of one of our other followers, of mine. He's 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 a, on on the thing for both of us. But he said he he pointed out that that trash can was the cleanest trash can, double <laughs> insulated with padding on the bottom. Because when that guy. What what I was referring to is is Paul posted a a video of this guy going, oh yeah, I built my shelves for all my tools, and he looks up and he sees Milwaukee he goes, what the hell is this thing doing here? And he grabs it and he throws it in <laughs> he, the trash. He, he gently throws it in the trash. Yeah, gently, like he like lays it in there. You know what I mean? He's like 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 a baby going down to sleep. Here here oh okay. <laughs> the moment and the it, camera cuts off, he'd be like, give me that. You know? He's taking his big wipes and, and, and his cleaner wipes. Sorry, baby. Sorry. Sorry. You're so good. To he's me. a he's Thank a you. DeWalt guy. He could tell he he likes DeWalt. And somebody came on there and posted a follow up and said, um, at least it wasn't that crappy neon green stuff. And I'm like, Are you talking about my Ryobi? Are you throwing it? Oh, are you are oh, you talking that. about my Ryobi? Yeah. I think that was O. To be <laughs> that was, was O. It? Was it? <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, you know what? Anyhow. So here I'm 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 I know I know I kind of got out of turn but this was what that question was. Mm -hmm. It said the code is com is this was a guy who was asking Edward cuz again mm -hmm. on on social media on especially on TikTok you can go into people's comments and and kind of ask them whether or not you're going to get the right response or not. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. So this was his question to to uh, Electric Edward. The mm -hmm. code is so confusing on when you need expansion fittings on PVC going underground. Please mm -hmm. do one explaining when it's needed. Thank you. And again, Edward, electrician Edward, probably doesn't mm -hmm. use much fittings and doesn't really get into it too much. So, and and much props to elect Electrical Edward for reaching out to to you because it I hadn't seen it. I, he must have just did it. Or... So he, uh -huh. he just did it. Like it was three hours ago. So he... Okay. But but what I'm saying is it takes for for some electricians to to put their pride down and ask another person of 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 your knowledge. It, it takes a certain step. Some guys would just go try to pull it out of the hat, you know, and and just give a bunch of crap. Mm -hmm. But uh, that was his question. So, well, again, one of the big things of whether or not you need expansion is two ways to look at that. One is your jurisdiction, uh, the a the uh, utility. They might have a requirement where everywhere it goes up because, again, usually that is on the supply side. So that's usually under the exclusive control of the utility, right? And so if you're doing that, that they usually will have documents that might have that requirement that say that needs to be in there. Like in Virginia, it was the blue book. Um, the other thing to, to remember is that if there is earth movement, or there's potential for earth movement, and we could argue that's anywhere, then you've got 300.5, which is underground installations, right? 300.5. And if you look at the requirements under J, it says where direct burial conductors, raceways, or cables are subject to movement by settlement or frost, direct buried conductors, raceways, and cables shall be arranged so as to prevent damage to the enclosed conductors 
or to equipment connected to the raceway. And of course, it gives an informational note that says, well, you know, for direct burial, you can do S loops in the ground. It allows for movement. But as it comes out of the ground, if you have your raceway that's coming out of the ground, uh, if you have subjective movement, if you if you have frost and there's different things like that, you're going to know in your area it's going to be probably something that's not new to you. And if that's the case, you're going to make the choice to use those. But the thing about the code is the code's not telling you where you have to do it. It's saying if you have the potential for earth movement, whether it's just earth movement like California earthquakes or, or you're somewhere where there's a lot of dry, a frost heave and things like that, then it behooves you to put on this expansion fitting right there in order to be able to make sure that it's not going to pull the raceways out of the meter enclosure. It's going to pull the knockouts, uh, all those type of things. Pull it off the wall. We've seen those pictures. We've all seen those pictures of, of stuff being pulled off the wall. So yeah. I, I'm assuming that, that he gave that reference to 300.5J. Uh, but again, that's a call that's based on jurisdiction. Um, and I've done plenty of them where I have not put an expansion where, say, PVC comes down from the meter down into the ground, and it goes down and has a 90, but then when it goes to the ground, you put S loops on it. So if you look at the informational note, it says this section recognizes S loops, and again, informational notes are not enforceable. It's good info. It says this section recognizes S loops in underground direct burial cables and conductors to raceway transitions. So that is where you might go from the meter you have the raceway, it goes down, turns a 90, right? And the conductors then come in through the end of it, which you'll seal. But if you were to put the S-loop on there, any movement would allow those conductors to move yeah. uh, a little bit in there. Again, not as much as you think, because when you do, even you do S-loops on it and you throw dirt onto it, it does compress it. It doesn't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't say, move as it? much as you think it would, right? But... Um, it allows, again, it says expansion fittings and raceway risers to fixed equipment and generally the provision of flexible connections to equipment subject to settlement or frost heaves. You're going to know your area. And I tell you, in a lot of areas that, that I were in, if they required it, it was something that the utility company required. And they would put it in, that type of thing. That, that, that's in our area, in Excel's jurisdiction around here if, if it's anything underground fed they want then, one would they want one and that that's period that is mm -hmm. you know and I've, I've done them where the inspector in that jurisdiction passed it he, he released the meter that's what we call it a, a meter release he released it to excel said this is perfectly up to code again based on the on our code book the nec excel comes out and red flags me and says no good because there, there's not an expansion fitting or, or what we call a slip sleeve. Right, That's right. What we called out in the field a little slip sleeve, you know. And, and and again, it's not up to the inspector to make that call. Like mm -hmm. you're saying, it's the it's the, the the power company. And I had to rip it all out and put a darn slip sleeve. And that's the last time I ever forgot to put on a slip sleeve in their jurisdiction. And actually, yeah. I put it in everybody's jurisdiction now because it just – I just don't want to get hit on it, and and that is what it is. So, yeah, um, well, I'm getting notice that uh, I. Oh Lord, I'm five minutes over. I actually have an engagement, so um, I will f try to follow up. Uh, whatever, see the question here, but we have to run. I didn't think we would go this long, but um, Jay, thanks for joining me as always, and. Yep. Uh, we will catch everybody uh, on another episode here in the future. And uh, whoever is asking the question, just go to paulavernethy.com and send it to me. I'm more than happy to answer your question, even do a podcast on it. That'd be a great podcast. So until next time, folks, stay safe and God bless. Welcome to Electrify.
the video show and podcast for electricians only, with your hosts, Paul Abernathy and Jay, the Basement King Grunberg. Sit back and enjoy the show. Paul Abernathy and Jay, the Basement King Grunberg. 